I mean, maybe I'm looking at it from an Anthony jo with an Anthony Joshua cap on. But if this is a one-sided fight either way, I think the fans will be demanding an Anthony Joshua fight, the winner of this fight. Ben, every time I see you, you've signed a new heavyweight superstar, son. What's the secret? Uh, bribery. No, I'm joking. Um, nah, you know, we're, we're fortunate to work with some of, the, some of the best talent in the world, not just in the country. So, yeah, we're really excited about this one. You helped guide Tyson back from the abyss, very well documented, and then you parted on very good terms, and I've never seen a crossword said between you. But every boxing fan, I think, felt, felt for you a little bit in the way that happened. You've now got Anthony Joshua in the stable and Moses Atalma, two guys at the other end of their careers, but both potentially, well, one a superstar and one. But I think fans are really excited for what you might be able to do because you've maybe missed, you know, the, the two wilder fights with, with, with Tyson in this period. Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I... I've got those guys at the tail end of their, not at the tail end, but you know, at certain points of their careers where the development had already been done. So it's exciting for me to get Moses at the very early, at the start of his career. Um, we're extremely excited because he is a rare exception in a sense that a heavyweight talent know. is very rare to stretch across any weight. Usually the heavyweight's coordination and skill set might be a little bit less than it would be of somebody at, uh, going through at the lower weight classes. but. Moses is, has the skill set that could stretch across any weight class, and that excites us. You should sell tickets for the sparring between Fabio, AJ, Moses, Jamie, TKV, Alois Jr. Do you know what it is? I try to keep a team environment, so I don't encourage too much of them. They'll help each other out, more so a bit of tech work. At times they might spar, but um, yeah, like it's important that they I like to try and create a team environment and encouraging each other. AJ shares advice with, with Moses. Moses asks AJ questions. And I love to have that team environment within the gym. Having dealt with Tyson and a guy like Josh Taylor, Billy Joe Saunders, supernatural talents, what's the potential with that boy? Because we've been talking about him since he was 15, sparring Joe Joyce and Nicole. So the buzz has always been there, but when you're actually in there working with him and seeing what he can do, how does, I don't want to say compare to them boys, but you must know what you're looking at. Yeah, like I said, for him to be a heavyweight, the skill set that he's got as a heavyweight, um, and to be honest with you, which is the number one factor for me when working with a fighter is his coachability. Um, it's extremely exciting because there's certain things that he did naturally well that he probably didn't understand how or why he got the results of what he was doing, wasn't conscious of it. The fact that we've made him conscious of it, I think it's opened up his eyes to a new, looking at boxing in a new way. And um, in time, I feel like that's going to have a, a, a real positive impact. He won't need, well, you, you won't need to get too involved in terms of guiding his career with Frank and Francis there. But I know he just wants to fight. He wants to fight soon. He wants domestic titles. He's annoyed that certain people are swerving him already. Do you play any part in, or maybe as a coach, how do you maybe taper him and keep him calm and remind him he's 19 years old? He's got the talent and the... And the the persona of like a 30 year old man. Yeah, he has, you're right there. I think it's important that we, first things first, we need to get him sparring, rounds of sparring, because that is a challenge in itself. So we need to get him sparring 10 rounds, 12 rounds, which we have done, but we need to get that consecutively. And I think that that will be a huge indicator on where we're at in terms of development, um, in terms of that area, efficiency, managing the rounds, that kind of thing. And then I know, I say this all the time, and I know it's like, you want to see him blow him away? Yes, you do. It sells well. But in terms of seeing how quickly he can move, we need to get him some rounds, and that's important. I think the one when he went a distance for the Euro Ukrainian fellow who blew out Matty Harris, for me, that was the distance, but that was the best thing that could have happened for him, really. 100%. I had a similar thing with Royston Barney Smith the other night. He went eight rounds, and I was so pleased with that because it was desperate and, and integral in terms of his development. And that's the number one thing at this stage in their career. Different when you're at the highest heights and you need to be selling pay-per-views and making a name for yourself. But in terms of development, which is the number one priority at the moment, the rounds are key. I was in a gym on his 18th birthday, right? That's how Hardy trains with the Willage family who looked after him early doors. And we did the typical tabloid story of beating the Mike Tyson record. Now, obviously, that the belts are held up. There's going to be rematches. There are mandatories. It's probably impossible. But just on talent basis, Ben, do you think he could have beaten Mike's record? Um, again, I think it's development, getting the rounds, because if the fight was to go 10, 12 rounds and he's blown, this is figurous, like an example, and he's blown everyone away in four rounds up to that point, we haven't seen where we're at 9, 10, 11 and 12. So again, that's a prime example of why it's integrity does get some rounds. 
we can look on to this fight now. A little while ago, we had Lennox Lewis on the phone, and because I think Turkey El Sheikh has started talking about making AJ and Fury, it's, it's not a myth, it's something they want to make happen, so we've got to talk about it. And we asked Lennox a little bit about it, and he said that it would either be the worst thing for Tyson Fury, for you being in AJ's corner, because Tyson knows how great you are, what you did, or it could be the best thing for Tyson because he knows your best points and your limitations and what you could give to AJ or take away from him. I mean, anything that Lennox Lewis says about heavyweight boxing, you, you sort of appreciate, but you sort of get, you get the sentiment that he's trying to get across? I think... I think... I think what he meant is you, you could be his kryptonite or you could be his superpower. Yeah, I understand that, but I think the, the way that that... The reality is this, I was 24 years old when I was training Tyson, something like that. I'm now 31, I've developed as a coach, I'm sure Tyson's developed as a fighter, AJ's changing as a fighter um, and improving, so the situation is very different. Um, again, they're two elites, very similar to this fight where, you know, it boils down to lots of different things have, an, have, a, have a role to play in, in how the fight is won how the fight is lost, how the fighter performs. Um, so yeah, I don't think that I'm uh, that big of a, uh, what's the word, element, factor, factor in that yeah. fight. I mean, listen, I'm a moron, my opinion is pointless. But all along I've been thinking that Tyson, two elite men, the bigger one should win. But just being around you a little bit this week, I don't think he will allow himself to lose. I, I, I couldn't split this if they paid me as much money as they wanted. What do you think from the outside, Ben? I think that they're both very versatile guys, and I think there's going to be ebbs and flows. I think there's going to be um, adjustments from both guys, and both guys are good enough to make those adjustments. I think it's who is quicker to make those adjustments, who is quicker to pick up on things happening, um, who is able to deal with the adversity that is brought to them from the opponent, um, and who is better prepared. And, and the reality is, if, if everybody in here could call the fight, we wouldn't bother being here, so... I think the draw is a blinding bet. And I also think that, would, would a rematch clause that is 100% guaranteed, argued over for so long, guaranteed silly money, do you think that could ever have an effect on how two fighters go into the ring? Almost like in a game of football, if you know you need a point. The reality, I know rematch, rematch is guaranteed, and it's this, that, but, I mean, maybe I'm looking at it from an Anthony jo with an Anthony Joshua cap on. But if this is a one-sided fight either way, I think the fans will be demanding an Anthony Joshua fight, the winner of this fight, so... Um, you only say that because you want your cut. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think, you know, if Fury wins, for me, that is the biggest fight in the... I, I don't even think it's open for debate. It's the biggest fight in British boxing history. What that means to British boxing from grassroots all the way through is... You know, you couldn't even put a label on it. And if Usyk was to win, you know, I'm very passionate about having the opportunity to help AJ put that, that fight right, so. Just finally, and thank you for your time, without blowing your trumpet too much, you did bring Tyson back from nowhere, living in his house for God knows how long. If he becomes the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world at the weekend, how, how proud would you feel and look back at what you've done? Yeah, look, it'd be great to be a part of it. Look, on the grand scheme of things of what I've done in terms of his whole life having an impact on him getting to this point is it's, it's minor but um, you know of course you know there'll always be that um, always be those positive memories and uh, like you said there's never been a bad word spoke between the two of us and uh, you know I always wish him the best.